All right, guys. Hey, welcome back to The Melanin Margin. I'm your host, Quavi Andre Williams. And I'm Daquan Wilson. <laughs> and welcome to the talk show dedicated to bringing the marginalized to the spotlight and uplift the Black voices that will no longer stay silent. But before we get into this week's episode, I wanted to discuss what just happened recently on the Barbie YouTube channel. They had a black Barbie-esque character on the on the show talking about race, and bitch, I was shook. <laughs> bitch, I was fully shook. I could not believe it. I was like, this is how you do this shit right here, Barbie. I had never been a Barbie fan until this day right here. Never. I, I, I was like, who the fuck is that bitch? But then, then suddenly I'm looking at this video, I'm like, this is how you do this shit right here. This is how, this is what, this is what makes me upset because like, when I look at people and, they, and they, when I talk about it, bring up race, whatever the case may be, people always love to argue and say, oh, well, we can't explain that to kids. Kids don't really understand that. We don't want to bring that to them. And Barbie said, bitch, let me show you what the fuck is the tea. Let me right show there. you what, <laughs> when, that, when she said, it was the, when she said, um, uh, uh, white people have an advantage that, uh, what is, I, I forgot how it was like, white people have an advantage and uh, that they didn't earn and white people have a disadvantage that they don't deserve. I was like, <laughs> Did you better say that shit? <laughs> it's so important for people to learn it at like such a young age. Like I remember earlier in the summer, um, in the midst of like Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud mm -hmm. Arbery and all these other George Floyd, all these things that were happening like early in the summer. I remember Cartoon Network having like a moment of silence where they're literally like, "We're not playing any cartoons right now because we need to acknowledge what is happening in our country." That stuff, that to me speaks so much volumes because people mis people misunderstand how smart children really are. And it's like, yeah, they may not understand the, 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 the death part so much or the stuff like that, but they do understand that things aren't fair. Right. And right. I really appreciate things like Cartoon Network and Barbie and stuff like that, bringing these things to light early on so that they can hopefully break that... Um, break that racist tradition that has been so ingrained in our society. So I really just wanted to kind of give them, take a moment to really just kind of give Barbie kudos on that and Cartoon Network because stuff like that is how we make progress. Period, exactly. and simple. So let's get into this week's topic. So we're talking about American, the American melting pot and cultural appropriation. So let me ask you, Daquan, do you believe that America is a melting pot? Why or why not? I think that America wants to be a melting pot. Do I think it is? No. Do I think it should be? Also no. I think that the whole melting pot is part of this assimilationist culture of America in terms of we should all like bring all these different cultures together and meld into one. When in reality, by making everything kind of this assimilationist frame, you're really just erasing so many parts of so many different cultures. Yes, I totally agree with that. Um, Jane Elliott brought up an interesting uh, point that I really wanted to bring up, and she discussed it in a way that I really that, that I really kind of um, vibed with when she said that America shouldn't be a melting pot, but it should be a salad. And I was kind of like, okay, I wonder where she's going with this whole thing. But she was like, well, think of it this way. When you eat a salad, you have lettuce, you have tomato, you have salt, pepper, uh, ranch dressing, all these other different elements that make this salad amazing and wonderful. But you would never put all of those ingredients into a blender, blend it up, and drink it because it would be disgusting. What makes a salad delicious is the different parts of the salad that make it that make it what it is. And when I heard that, it really makes because she related it back to uh, to the culture. She was like, "The facts are, America is not a melting pot. We are not the same. We are different. White people's body chemistry and makeup is different than black person's uh, makeup. It's same as Italian and, and Hispanic and stuff like that. All Indian culture, Native American, like." There, it is okay to be different. It is okay that we are different. The problem here in lies is when people see that difference as an issue. That's where we're having the problems because the facts are a Native American person, a white person, or a, um, or a black person, all of these different cultures that we have out here are not better than the other. Great. No other culture is the supreme culture. But we seem to have this sort of dichotomy in life where we think, oh, well, our culture is better, or we need to take, uh, uh, this culture is this, or this culture is that, or white culture is this, and the fourth, and it's kind of like, 
I wish we could kind of move away from that and recognize that, yes, there is a such thing as German culture and white culture, and there is a such thing as Black culture, African culture, and there's a difference between those two and stuff like that. So I, re I really wish that we could start to get into the habit of celebrating other, each other instead of tearing each other down, because you would oftentimes see even like, um, like certain, even within the, um, the minority culture, they, they seem to have a sort of uh, pushback against each other. Why do you think that is? I think that one of the biggest thing is I learned about this in one of my political science classes, but like this whole model minority kind of myth in terms of like each minority is kind of like put against each other to be that model minority to almost mm -hmm. assimilate into whiteness or be able to gain certain capital that others can't. Um, so you see this a lot like when how it was kind of described to me is looking at like things like Asian Americans who often, you know, have a lot of family grown businesses and run different things within their family and they're able to like gain some type of wealth and gain some type of entrance into the system. But there's still this act of like their Asian identity still makes them different. Same with uh, any other minority group. There's something that makes them different. And there's something that like shows that they are different from whites and that is it's seen as inferior, but in reality, as you said, there should not be one superior race. We should not be using that type of language ever. It should be, we are all different cultures. We all come from different backgrounds and we should respect that because those are the things that enrich us. They enrich our culture. We are able to better understand ourselves and un understand others when we can see our differences and understand other people's differences because that helps us to know all right, what are things about me that are different than others? And like, yes. get to like the root of like what it is about me, if you know yes. what I'm saying. And that's, and that's what I've, uh, I, when I saw that thing, cause we always have this, I don't know, and it's, it's, it's most prevalent in American culture, this idea of sameness, this idea of staying within your subset and your culture. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. especially like the, there's, it seems to be this almost closed, um, closed, like closed um, canon when it comes to black culture and when it comes to uh, Hispanic culture and it comes to other culture, there's not really a sense of sharing. And for me personally, I love my culture as a black person, but I also am very interested in Hispanic culture. And I love the certain holidays they have like the day of the dead and stuff like that. Like I love though, I love aspects of their culture as well. And there seems to be this sort of like, if you respect another culture or you appreciate another culture, it almost comes across as you're trying to be a part of that culture. Does that make sense? Have you have you yeah, noticed yeah. that too? Like there seems to be like, oh, you're not proud of being black if you like this or you like that or you like this. Supposed to, if you if you black you have you have to like these the blank blank and blank of our culture. You can't like this and that and the fourth. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think this goes right back into this idea of the melting pot of America. Because even within like certain aspects of you know blackness or Hispanic and Latinx culture. Um, if you embrace your culture, somehow some people see that as denouncing Americanness. Like you can't be both black and American. Yes. And I feel yeah. that it's been internalized into us that we are only able to occupy one identity at the time at a time when in reality everything is intersectional. And even if you don't occupy an identity, yes. you can still be able to see, recognize and celebrate other identities and be able to like recognize the beauty in other identities and their culture. And I really wanna to touch on what you just said, especially when it comes to being able to, we have this, we have this thing in American culture or in, just in, in most cultures where people think that you are only one thing. You are only African-American or you're only blah, 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 but even the term African-American, that denotes two different identities. And we seem to have, like you said before, this idea that we can only be one or the other. We can't, we can't be both. Just like there is a, a gay culture, a, a, there's, a, um, there's a, a music culture, a certain type, like there's, there's different aspects of different things that make us who we are. No person is just African. No person is just American. No person is just white. You know what I'm saying? There's, there had, yes. there's, this, there's this idea that we can't be more than just one thing like you just, that you, you just brought up. And I wish that we would kind of shy away from that to realize that there are different things that make up a part of our culture. 
There are different, and, and, it's, and it borrows from everything. Mary Magdalene brings up this idea of cultural relativism. And it's this idea that you are able, the only way that you're able to have your culture is by seeing what it looks like in comparison to other cultures. That's how you denote your individual culture. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that makes total sense. And even like adding to that, I think that there is a sort of cultural transmission or um, diffusion in terms of there are so many aspects of people's culture that have mingled or mixed with other cultures. And that's just the nature of us being in spaces with other people. Yes, yes I completely, completely agree. That, that to me is what, what makes, that's to me, that to me is what makes culture so fascinating because there's so many different aspects to it. There's things in white culture that I wasn't aware of. And there's things that, and you oftentimes see people even not even un, unintentionally or unconsciously that you borrow from different types of cultures. There are many people who borrow from Korean culture, especially, especially a lot of Asian culture. You see that borrowed in America, you know, certain types of even uh, certain types of eating styles, eating habits, stuff like that. It's borrowed from those separate cultures. And people don't even see that that is, that is in and of itself cultural relativism. Understanding your culture, it seeing and viewing other cultures helps you better understand your own. And it helps you better solidify the things in your culture. Does that make sense? Like, you know, there was this, um, there, she brings up this cool thing of like uh, trying out a new sword. That's what she brings up in her philosophy. And it's the idea that in Japanese culture, I believe it was, or in one of the Asian cultures, um, back in, back, back, way, way back in the day when um, like um, uh, samurais, would use their sword and practice it on like a pedestrian or a, a regular person to see if it actually works. But it would be like an honor to be killed by a samurai. And of course, in other cultures, like, oh my God, what the frick is that? Like, that's so crazy what the case may be. But in their culture at that time in place and time, that was what it was. But to sit there and say, oh yeah, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Well, in our culture, in the way she kind of compared it to, in our culture, women don't have the same rights as men or, um, or uh, uh, black people are being killed and being uh, enslaved and stuff like that, especially when and it, it, it further notes the theory that things that, are, things that are wrong in our culture and wrong, seeing other cultures helps us um, kind of helps us create a, um, a stronger culture, if that makes sense. It helps us uh, create a stronger bond to what we know is right and wrong. Yeah, because you'll never know what you don't have until you see something, somebody else that has that. Yes. And I also like to really bring up that idea of like people trying to take away from people's culture. This idea that, oh, um, like when I hear a lot of people saying like things like, I don't see you as that. I just see you as a person. Oof, I, the whole I don't see color conversation. I can, we can do a conversation on that, like, <laughs> but I do like, I do think that like one of the parts of that is a cultural erasure in terms yes. of I don't see color. So I don't, I don't recognize all of the history that's behind how you got here. I don't recognize all the systemic challenges that you yes. face because of your identities. And it becomes this problematic cultural erasure because then you're saying that, oh, we should all be human. We should all just be this non-culture yes. having being. When in reality, regardless of who you are or regardless of where you come from, you're going to have some type of culture. Yes, and I wanted to ask you this question. There was this uh, YouTuber that I used to follow that I don't follow anymore because of the, some of the comments that they made that I'm about to tell you about. But I was, um, they were practicing um, tarot reading, right? And, you know, I asked them a simple question. I was like, you know, um, how are you able to get involved in tarot reading, especially being that you were raised in Black culture? Because in Black culture, uh, mysticism is not seen as a god or a god labor to kiss me. So I was like, how hard was that for you to kind of take that moment to reach in, and seek out something like that, especially when it's so deeply ingrained in you not to do that. And they were like, oh, I'm not, I don't know where you get that from. Um, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, black, I'm human. And it's like, and I was sitting the whole time like, wait a minute, but, but you, but you are black though. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. And the whole, the whole basis of their argument was that, oh, it's, it's not a problem. If it, they, they were, they did this whole thing where they blamed black culture for it. They were saying basically that, oh, it's our fault for the the, the cultural um, problems that we have in our in, in our system. And I'm like, mm -hmm. 
I don't know about that. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't. Say, I wouldn't go that far. And, I, and the whole the whole basis of the argument basically was that it was our fault that we weren't doing successful and we weren't blah 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 and all, all that stuff like that. And it's kind of like that to me is extremely problematic in the sense that you are partic- you are ignoring the reality of the situation. That there is something that there, there is this sense of like I said before, just like I brought up, like mysticism in the black culture versus the white culture is very different. And those who are embarking in those things as a black person, there are certain cultural um, uh, beliefs that we hold that sometimes could distract us from our um, from the goal they want to have. Does that make any sense? Like if you wanted to do, if you wanted to read tarot, if you wanted to uh, be a Wiccan in black culture, that is seen as something completely, you know, against it because of our deep roots in Christianity and all that stuff, whatever the case may be, and. My question is, I bring this up to ask you, what do you, how do you feel about people who say things like that? Like our culture does not define us in a way. I think that, I think or, that or, or, or just, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna clarify that. <laughs> does our, <laughs> I'm sorry, wait, no. How does, my question is, do, how do you feel about people who believe that their culture doesn't dictate some of the decisions that they make? That's what I was trying to say. I think that like, in a sense, sure you're a human being like you have the autonomy to do whatever you want but you can't say that your culture doesn't have any influence on you whatsoever yes it's going to have some influence it may not be something that you like major your mind and recognize it may not be a conscious decision but there could be something going on subconsciously based off of some of the cultural act events or actions of your life that will then influence the decision that you make. You can't really equate being like, oh, I'm human. So like culture doesn't matter to me. In reality, you were raised a certain way. You were raised yeah. with certain beliefs. You were raised around certain people that did certain things and it created this sense of social norms. Yes. So you were socialized into a culture, regardless of whether you want to see yourself as a part of that or not. So it's going to have some type of influence on your life, regardless. Snap, bitch, snap. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like the whole basis of the whole basis of what we're talking about is, is this understanding that culture has an effect. It has an effect on you. It has an effect on your decisions. It has effects on effects on your life. Specifically, I, I, so I sent you this uh, Instagram post back a while a, a while back about um how black people or in black culture, it's not very common to eat meat that is not well done, even though you can't, even though having something medium well or medium rare wouldn't actually hurt you, it's actually, it keeps the flavor in, but for some reason in black culture, because of the way we were raised, because of the fact that in, 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 in the, um, in, in our history, when we were, when we were slaves and stuff like that, we were given the food that was expired. So we had to cook it until it was almost brown black, like t- till it was almost burnt to get all of that toxin out. But we didn't even, I didn't even, I didn't even realize that. Like my, I, I would hear my friends saying, oh, I, ate my, I ate my steak um, medium rare. And I'm like, Ugh, I'm, Ugh. I'm like, oh, right. right. Or like I eat my steak, I, I, I eat it kind of uh, sort of rare. And I'm like, uh-uh, baby, it's red. <laughs> baby, it's red. It's blood. There's it's blood in that. It's not for consumption. But they say that it's not, they said it's like a, like a, uh, it's not blood. It's like a, some kind of protein something. I'm like, yeah. girl, it's red. I, it's blood to me. It's, it looks like blood to me. But once again, and the same thing goes, the same token goes to seasonings. Why black food is so um, packed with seasonings because of the fact that again, given the expired meats and given the expired foods, we had to make it taste like something. And these are things that we don't even realize. Like when I cook my food, I don't just go, oh, this amount of this, this amount of that. I'm just kind of like, well, this look like it's enough. Well, that like it's, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there are just things that we don't even think about that affect our daily life. And like I said, if I were to eat a steak with just salt, pepper, and onion on it, I'd be like, bitch, what is this? I'm like, bitch, this is disgusting. Because I've been, it's, it's ingrained in our culture to eat food that's well seasoned and well prepared. Yeah, I think everybody needs to like look at that bigger history and there's like a bigger picture for everything. Like the world did not start with you. There have been so many things that has happened before you to lead you to get to where you are now. So you have to recognize not only the things in your life that influence you, 
the things in your grandparents' life that influenced your parents, the yes. things in their grandparents' lives that have influenced them, and all of these generations of history and culture building in this country, in the world in general, all of that plays a part of where we are today and how we express our cultures. And being that we're starting to be more respectful and being that we're starting to see more um, diversity and respecting diversity, we're starting to recognize things like Indigenous Peoples Day, which I'm like fucking slay. I was so, I was so happy when they said people were starting to do that because we have been celebrating this white man for quote unquote discovering America so many times before when he actually got lost and he had discovered nothing. You can't go into someone's house, kill them, and be like, this is my house now. I discovered it. That's not how that 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 I don't think that's how um discovering works. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I just I, last time I checked. So I just wanted to make that point too. I don't think you can discover something where there's already been people. So like, yeah, that's that's not how that works. <laughs> Somebody's been living here. So I was really, really proud to see that uh, Native American culture and stuff like that was being celebrated on Indigenous Peoples Day, which I now recognize that now. I don't give a fuck what anybody calls it anymore. It's Indigenous Peoples Day to me. But uh, moving on, uh, now we're going to go ahead and move on to our idea of cultural appropriation. So when do you think celebrating someone's culture or respecting it can go into appropriation? I think that two of the biggest things that come to mind in terms of when appreciation turns into appropriation is when there's capital involved and when there's uh, no reference to the original culture. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the biggest things that I think um, in terms of when capital is involved is like you benefiting from somebody's culture that they cannot benefit from. So I think of all these different like fashion shows and all, all of those where it's like you see aspects of people's culture being put as high fashion, yet if they wore these cultural garments themselves, they would be seen not as high fashion, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, and then also not referring to the original culture. A lot of these lines don't necessarily have the people from the cultures that they are trying to take inspiration from. And so yes. I think a lot of the times you have all these different decisions made by people who usually are white, making these big decisions on what they put out for certain brands and they don't have enough people of color or people that are from the culture that they are taking inspiration from to really be like, hey, like, no, this is not okay. Okay, that's okay. Because like you have some traditional garments that are made for certain celebrations that are very formal and you're and some people strip these down to just being, oh, it looks cute. Let me just like make it into a crop top or make it all this and that. And it's like, you are then disrespecting the culture because you're completely stripping away all of the tradition that comes behind that garment. Yes, that's exactly how I feel about, um, especially in Halloween, that's when we see the for real, for real cultural appropriation. Right. Because I remember back, it used to be a thing to dress up like an Indian. And I'm just like, I mean, even as a kid, never did it cross my mind because again, it was not my culture. So I was like, never thought of, oh yeah, let me dress up like a like some like somebody else. Like they, it's kind of like dressing up in um, the uh, kimono uh, garb that a lot of um, geisha ge geisha I think it is. Mm -hmm. Like it's like it's when you do not understand. It's because like you said about bringing back to native bringing it back to Native American. Um, a lot of those Native American um, garbs and a lot of those Native American costumes, quote unquote, are so deeply rooted in their tradition. They have to not own, like you said, some of, some of those garbs that these people are putting on take years for Native Americans to actually earn the right to wear certain things, certain chiefs, certain peoples. And people are just putting it on, especially this TikTok trend where we're seeing people um, doing the Native, Amer like the Native American thing where they're like, they, do, they throw the uh, shoe in the air and they start pretending to dance around. And some of them are actually Native American and some of them aren't. Yeah. And it's like, I see what you're trying to do, but baby, that's not your culture. It's not. You, I, I, I wouldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, and I'm African-American, I'm a minority, but I still wouldn't do that because that's not my place. You see what I'm saying? It's not yeah. my place. And I also think it's not the place of someone not in that minority to check someone who isn't. Does that make sense? Like I, you oftentimes see 
white people getting offended for black people or for white or, or for in, or Native American people. It's kind of like, let them speak first. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need, we don't need you to, to tell us what's wrong or what's right. Right. Before you speak, take a little temperature check. <laughs> like, is this a problem? Let somebody tell you that it's a problem. And then you can pop and off. And then you can jump on. Let's, let's let them speak up first. But I didn't, I, but when I heard about that, because you would see it in TV shows and movies, a lot of people wearing Native American like costumes for their, for whatever TV show it's on. And it's kind of like the level of disrespect that Native American people have gone through. Astronomical. Society, <laughs> astronomical astronomical it is crazy to me because i don't i just don't understand the train of thought that people have when they're like let me put on the let me draw on my face and put on the stuff even when they do african stuff too you see a lot of people doing that african garb so i'm, I'm dressing african for um for, uh whatever and it's kind of like no right i'm like oh, first of all you're white and you're doing this i would even have hesitation as a black person to do this because at the <laughs> end of the day like we can't look at Africa as this monolith. There's no one African culture. These come <laughs> from specific tribes and specific countries in specific areas. You can't just like treat it all as one. So like if I as a black person is aren't divulging in African culture like that, you as a white person definitely should not be. At all, like, oh, I'm throwing an African themed party, bitch. Excuse me. I'm sorry, excuse me, bitch. Like I just, I can't, and it's, and it's crazy to me because like I said before, I, my whole thing is, for me, a pro, appreciation, appreciation becomes appropriation. Like you said before, when you do not recognize the roots of where whatever you're doing came from. See, did you, did you hear about that uh, when Adele had got caught up in that thing where she was wearing a Jamaican um, outfit or whatever for a Jamaican uh, celebration? Did you feel like that was appropriation? Um, so in terms of the whole Adele thing, I'm going to just be honest. I didn't read up on it a whole bunch. I saw it and then I was like, mm, something feels off about this. But <laughs> I know that like, it's not necessarily my place because I recognize that the festival was for a specific yes. culture and I'm not a part of that culture. So I was like, let me just take a step back and like, see what other people are saying about this before I throw my, my, my hat yeah. to it. And I noticed that many people that were, once again, making a whole statement were white people. And I haven't seen that many Jamaican people saying things about it. And then when I finally did, they were like, it's a Jamaican festival. These are things that they're selling at the Jamaican festival. She's wearing something that they bought, that they are selling at this festival. She's supporting a black culture. She's supporting the culture by putting this, by putting it on. And they were like, the way they were acting was like, she was at home and sold a bra that was like the Jamaican flag was like, baby, look at me. Like, <laughs> just like, no, that's not what it was. Now, had that been the case, in my opinion, that would have been appropriation. Because right. that is, there is no event. You're not doing it to celebrate anything. You're doing it simply for commercial success and commercial gain from it. But in that particular celebration, again, I'm not Jamaican, so I can't speak for all Jamaicans. But I would say that it becomes appropriation, like you said, when it's being used for commercial purposes, when it's being used to further your own agenda. And a lot of times we would see, and what I don't like, especially is when you hear white people renaming traditionally black hairstyles. Oh God. And it's like, no ma'am, those are not, those are not a um, uh, 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 scalp twist or whatever, those are, those are cornrows, those are cornrows, are they're not, they're not, uh, what the fuck they call it? I don't know. Um, Boxer braids. Uh, yeah, it's, girl, no, 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 no. It's this, you know what I mean? Like it just, it, that's where it pisses me off. Or like, we'll see this thing of black fishing. So much. That's like the biggest thing because you know that you are taking from a culture specifically to benefit from it. Period. And that makes it so problematic. You are literally trying to make yourself seem like you're a part of the culture. Like I see this so much like where you have these white celebrities that have like all of this, all of these tans and people are like, oh, they're so like ethnically ambiguous. They, they yeah. could be a person of color. And it's like, this is a white person. At the <laughs> like you wash all that spray tan Baby, off, you want <laughs> they will be pale. That's kind of how I feel about Ariana Grande. I've seen that a lot because like, if you look at her when she was on Victorious. Totally different. Now, 
she looks like an entirely different person. And not just growing up, but like color, like her skin tone. And what I don't appreciate is that people want to be black when it benefits them. Or people want to act or look black when it's popping. Because right. you see this oftentimes, the cycle of being black or being black or ethnic comes into style and it goes out of style again. Like it was in the 90s, it was in style to be black then, but now it's like back out of style in the two, early 2000s. Then it became back in style in this you know, new time, whatever. But it just frustrates me because even when it comes to gay culture, you'll see a lot of female rappers or female uh, uh, artists who allude to them being bisexual because it's cool or because it's hip. And it's like, baby, that's not what that is. You're, you're literally stealing from a culture to benefit yourself. And that to me frustrates me because like I said before, you want to be black when it's beneficial. I can't take off my skin tone. Not at all. I'm black all the time. This isn't a choice. 24 seven. 24 seven, seven days a week, baby, was good. 365 days a year, baby. Period. Here on period, on period. So like, it just frustrates me when I see stuff like that. And one of the artists that I have to give kind of homage and respect to is Queen Herbie. I don't know if you know of her, but she does a really good job with uh, tiptoeing that line of appreciation of a black culture because she's a rapper. She's a white rapper, but she's white. Like you can tell she's white, but she makes sure to include black artists in her songs. She makes sure to include black people in her videos and all shades of black people, not just light skinned black people, ethnic, ethnically ambiguous black people, but black people that you know are black. You know what I mean? And it's and she oftentimes interviews and says things like, I know that I am borrowing from this culture and I pay respect to this culture. I pay appreciation to this culture because I know that I didn't, my culture didn't originate this. And I was like, bitch, you better. That's how you do it. That's called recognizing. And that's where I think people forget is that if Ariana Grande, for me personally, would say things like say just make it known that hey listen I know I, I I'm I know I'm tanner than I am but I'm still a white woman like I'm still fully white like you know what I mean like a certain you know people thinking she's a whole Latina yes that's the problem <laughs> people think she's like oh she must be mixed no bitch she's white yeah I and I remember white, seeing maybe? a video like there was a video like in the side to side music video there was like somebody who like literally put Ari and Nikki side by side and like look, compared their skin tones and they were so close. And baby, you don't think that's a problem? Now I'm not sitting there saying that Ariana Grande is racist. I mean, personally, but like I said, I believe all white people are racist. But that's the whole the conversation. We already discussed that. But what I'm Check saying- that episode later. That's episode. <laughs> but what I am saying is that there is a problem there. There is a problem. And I, I, I feel it frustrates me because black culture is always seen as hip when it unless benefits it's a white black people. person doing it unless it's a black person doing it when when ariana grande does the side to side be like oh she's so sexy and she's so blah 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 blah. but when cardi b or megan the stallion or beyonce make a song about sex and make us oh this oh she's a slut or she's a blah 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 it's kind of like it's mighty funny how when black women or latinx women are being sexual or sexy is seen as them being almost whorish. But when a white woman who blackfishes does the exact same thing, or a white woman who borrows from black culture does the exact same thing, like like she a uh, bad girl baby, whatever the girl name is, the the one catch me outside. How about that? Whoever she is. The little girl, that little girl right there, same thing with her too. It's just like when they do this, oh, it's this, oh, it's sexy, or it's, oh, it's edgy, or it's whatever. It's kind of like, but when we do it, it's a whole other thing. And that's where I have the problem, is that many of these white artists or white people won't sit there and say, listen, this is not my culture, but I pay respect to it, and I appreciate this culture. If I were to um, uh, play, even, even, even as simple as uh, saying, uh, celebrating a Hispanic artist, like for me, because I like Hispanic culture and I appreciate Hispanic culture. There are certain things that I wouldn't do, even though I like the Day of the Dead and I like those um, that imagery or whatever, I would never call myself going, let me do a painting on my face of makeup that's traditional to Hispanic culture in that particular day of celebration. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I pay, because I'm appreciating that day and appreciating that culture, but recognizing that I'm not a part of that culture. 
You can appreciate from a distance. From a di bitch, you can appreciate. That's a coin hashtag appreciate from a distance. We done created a new hashtag now, bitch. And, and that's, like I said before, it ha have you ever had in your life where someone, where you've seen someone appropriate your culture? Um, I have to think about that. Probably. Not <laughs> I mean, there's, pro there's been like so many instances. I would think like the biggest thing is like white frat parties in terms of how they like use black music or try to like speak yes. black, which that's another episode we can talk about. Oh. <laughs> but I do see this like appropriation, even like within like proximity. So like when they're talking to their white friends, they are all yeah. preppy and whatever and then yeah. they're talking to me and they want to seem hip and cool or down or whatever and it's like no like that is not who you are like you can appreciate black culture without being in it yes and that and that frustrates me so bad because i'll see a lot of white like my, some of my white friends wanted to give me dap when i was in middle school i'm kind of like what the fuck are you i was like what it's like no what are you doing first and of all i don't know where your hands been <laughs> pre-corona coronavirus <laughs> but second of all like baby you don't do that but you did it with me because you think that that's how i and once again yes it is how i greet my black friends but that's because they know how to dab number one and number two that's our cultural calm that's that's how we speak that's how we speak to each other but when i saw what they and they would do they would do and it would always be the white boys it, it is it's it's, and I will say this much about white women. You don't really see too many of them doing that, but a lot of white men, you will definitely see them borrow from black culture often, often. And then, like I, like you said before, it's always when it's convenient for them. When they're throwing a party, when they're hanging out with their black friends, they want to do this and that and the fourth. And it's kind of like, baby, baby, we can see through that. So there's, there's a big difference between people being raised in a culture and someone completely stealing a culture. Like, I find that you can, and it's always, it's, it's just in the way that some people speak that you can see. I've always noticed that because there, there are white people who have been raised around black friends and around black people. And the way I see it is that I still feel like even those people who are raised in those uh, different cultures um, or a culture that's not theirs, I still think there's still a level of respect they have to have. Like their parents or they're like if like if a black person adopts a white child, you know, there's certain things that you have to be able to tell your child, like, listen, this may be what you've been raised to do, but understand that this is not um okay for you to do. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm trying to figure out the best way to phrase it, but it's like even if you were raised in a culture that was not your own, understand that it's not a part of your tradition. Yeah, your proximity yeah. doesn't make you any more black. Like yes. you are still white, you will still be seen as white. You will still pr be benefiting from white privilege, regardless of whether you were raised in a black neighborhood. Also, it like totally makes a difference whether like you have like a white person who you know moved into a black neighborhood and yeah. started hanging out with black people all the time, and then they want to like try like you don't speak like that when you get at home with your white parents. And I think if you can like switch between those two realms, like it's not a matter of you switching for survival. Like black people have to do that for code switching, which again, another episode for another, another episode. episode. <laughs> but if you aren't a part of a culture like through and through, you need to be able to recognize how you enter certain spaces. Yes, and that's my because you lot of like you said the intersectionality, uh, intersectionality, that whole thing. Like there are certain white people who are raised in certain cultures, but just because you were raised in that culture does not give you the permissions that being a native of that culture does give you. Does that make sense? Like right. as a black person, even though I was, even though it, let's say I was raised in Hispanic culture as a black person and I spoke fluent Spanish, and the the case may be, I'm not Dominican. I'm not Puerto Rican. I'm still African American. So there are certain parts of their tradition that, even though I was raised to to, to uh, follow said, said traditions, there are certain things that I'm just not allowed to do and not allowed to participate in because of my race and ethnicity. Right. And there's just and that's and that's where it goes into the whole idea of 
paying appreciation, paying respect to that culture, saying like, yes, I'm not a part of it, but I appreciate and respect it. Now, what I want to ask you to specifically, because it's called the melon margin. So I wanted to get back to the main point of how do you feel about American culture appropriating Black culture in almost every aspect that you can see it in? Oh, it's trash. <laughs> garbage. Because oh, this is garbage. This is garbage. A dumpster fire. A dumpster fire. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of those things that like you see all of these, like so many aspects of what we see as American culture comes from Black culture. Music, for example, you can't name any type of American music that doesn't have some type of relationship to Black music or African music, even like country. Yes. Country has roots in African-American music, regardless of how patriotic you think country music is. Mm -hmm. So when you have this entire society benefiting from a culture that they are actively oppressing, that ain't it. It ain't it. And that kills me so much when I see things like that in our, in our, like just, just even styles, style, style choices and such like that. Like it just, it frustrates me because it's always like, oh, well, you know, it, it, it frustrates me mostly because of the fact that, like I said before in my, in a previous episode that our history books teaches us that black history started with slavery. And that's just not the case that it doesn't teach us about the stuff that black people discovered certain things that you have that black people have discovered, like central air. Exactly. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like the hot comb, like stuff like that, stuff that white people use. Like, there's some, I don't know if it's central air or central heat, one of the two, but but a black person invented one of those two things. But the point is there's so much that is, and whether you want to believe it or not, our inventions are a part of our culture. Peanut butter is a part of black culture. You know what I'm saying? Like things that, that people don't understand that yes, it's an invention, but it still came from black people. And that has an influence on how you live your day-to-day life. Right, because some of that has some type of cultural relevance to it. You in, A lot of times things are invented for a need and that need a lot of times come from the conditions that people are living in. And that's the reality that, and that we see. And it just, it, like I said, it frustrates me so bad because there's always this whole thing. Like, y'all need to take y'all self and go back to Africa, go back to wherever y'all, y'all whatever, whatever the case may be. And it's kind of like, baby, have you, have you I don't know. I, I watched the episode of the park and the minute it made me thinking, it was kind of like a white person should really take a second to sit down and be like, what would my life be with, what would my life be, be like without black inventions? Right. And really sit down and think about, oh, wow, there is so much that we have contributed as a people to your quote unquote culture, to American culture. Because let's be real, American culture is just a whole combination of a lot of different cultures. But for some reason, it's somehow it's synonymous with white culture. Let's not, let's not even go there. But for the basis of this argument, there is so much of our culture as black people that is stolen. And I say stolen because there is no respect paid to that. Right. Yes, we get one, one we get one month out of the year. But baby, what about all the other races too? What about the, all the other other contributions that we could have found that we, that we can find? Why is it that our history books are not low? History should not be a one book course. It should not. There are so many things that all cultures, Asian, Hispanic, Native American, Indian, all of these cultures, sweat lotters came from Indian culture, you know, stuff like that. Like all these different things, natural healing, a lot of that stuff, all that, all those remedies, these white people talking about all that, oh, it's a salve that I can use for blah, blah, blah. No, baby, that's Native American culture. Baby, they were the first to start doing stuff like that with nature. Also African culture. Baby, let's not forget that. You know what I mean? And that, and that kind of stuff pisses me off. And I'm sorry to get so angry, but it's, it pisses me off so much because I'm like, there's so much that comes into what American quote unquote culture is. And so much is borrowed from so many different places. And it just, it baffles me at how arrogant white people are. <laughs> so much. It and just, it baffles me. I'll just jump in. Like, first of all, you should never apologize for your anger because I think like, in this conversation, like that is an aspect that is being forced upon black people in terms of like, 
if you are being angry, then you're overreacting because it's not so serious. It's just a, a shirt or it's just a hairstyle or it's, and it's like, if this is your culture and your culture is being disrespected, you have the right to be as angry as you want, regardless. It just, it just makes, it makes me angry because I'm just, I'm, it makes me emotional. I'm trying to cry because like, it's just the fact that our society is so blinded so blinded to all of the contributions that people of non-white origins have participated, have, have brought to this. It just, it, 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 it doesn't make any sense. And that's why white superiority, white supremacy makes no sense to me. Because Zero. for you to be so, like I said before, so arrogant to not even understand that all this Mexican, go back to Africa. Well, bitch, stop eating quesadillas. Stop eating salsa. Right. Stop eating all these seasons that these that Afri that um that Hispanic people created. How about that, baby? Y'all food gonna be bland as fuck if we all leave. Bitch, if every person of ethnic origin left, bitch, y'all would have salt and pepper. The fuck, like, and garlic. Maybe a little bit of garlic and onion. Maybe if that. If that, you know what I mean? And, and, and it just. It, it, like I said, especially with our president, I don't mean to get political, but like it's just certain things that like once again, hearing that debate and hearing that him not denouncing white supremacy and him perpetuating the image that white people are better, that white is right. You know what I'm saying? Ku Klux Klan members, people, white supremacist skinheads were celebrating when they heard their president not denounce white supremacy, not recognize how much all of our, and it's so quick on build a wall, bitch, make them pay for it. And she's like, then I'll just, it, it baffles me because, like I said, there is just so much that people of color have brought to this world and so much disrespect that we're, see, we're receiving, even in 20 fucking 20, bitch. 2,000 right. years, bitch. And that's not BC. That is why <laughs> these conversations are so important. And that's why it's so, like, this is never just something that like we need to just get over. It's just yeah. like we're taking it out of proportion. Like it is 2020 and we are dealing with the same history that we have been dealing with for centuries. Maybe it's maybe there's been some progress, quote unquote, but in reality, it's the same systematic issues mm -hmm. just with a new face coat. And oh. Oh, bitch, say that for the people in the back. One more time. One more time. One more time. It's the same systematic issues, just with a new face coat. And that's, and that's the facts. That's the facts. The reality is in this world, we need to, we need to, we need to start uh, taking on that cultural relativism. We need to start understanding that even white people, especially white people watching, start talking it's to your no black Hispanic friends, Indian friends, Asian, if you have any, if you're not a fucking racist, but if you have friends of different races, ask them about their lives, ask them about their cultures, understand that, wow, shit is different. You know what I'm saying? I have, I have friends of all, all races and credences. I have, I have friends of all of different cultures. And it just, like I said before, even with my friend, he's Asian and he's um, Laotian. And there was a lot about Asian culture, his culture that I didn't know. And I was like, oh shit, like I didn't know, I, bitch, I didn't know that Laos was a thing because I never experienced that before. We're not taught yeah. about it. Uh, we have this very much Western centric view of everything. All I, only, only Asian people that I was aware of, because it was the most, com most common ones that we see on TV is Chinese, Japanese, and um, uh, Korean. And stuff like that was only the, the three ones. And I was like, I was like, hey, I was asking him random. I was like, hey, what, what? I was like, what's, what's your nationality? He was like, I'm, I'm Laotian. I'm like, the fuck? I was like, what the fuck? I, for real, I was like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I never heard of it before, but because I, because I allowed myself to make friends with people outside of my culture, I was exposed to a culture that I never would have been exposed to before. I learned something. I got out of my ignorance and started to educate myself about something that I did not know about. And that's where I think that we kind of are running into these problems that people are being are remaining ignorant, a blissful ignorance. They only see their culture. They only see their, 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 um, it's, it's always laser focused. And it's like, take a moment and say, yes, I don't know about this culture, but I do want to know about it. What are some of the foods that y'all eat? What are some of the popular meals that y'all prepare? 
go to your friend's note of like way andre was talking about he was learning about a different culture without being in that culture yeah. be in it remember what we said appreciate from a distance, <laughs> from, a distance from a distance so i think we've kind of reached into the conversation unless you want to add anything else saquon i think that's it I remember think appreciate it. from a distance appreciate bitch that is a that, bitch hashtag appreciate from a fucking distance okay so guys as always thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe follow us on instagram daquan is an at daquan 950 950 and at andre talk slot or at on uh quave andre um on instagram uh, please make sure to keep the conversation going down in the comments down below. We want to have these discussions. We want to have this conversation. We want to open up this dialogue. We, like always, we will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.